Hey guys, Gare here, Wednesday Angelique. It's been a while since I've done a video, probably about a month. Uh, today I'm going to do one that I've wanted to do for a very long time. The non I wanted to show you Miss Olympia. Look how big she's getting. Yeah, that's a big kitty and she's I want no part of this. Uh, but let's show them your new toys. <laughs> let's show them your new toys. I need to do this video fast. We got an attack monkey. For the attack monkey. What's your monkey? What's your monkey? Yeah, that's your monkey. Got this monkey a week ago, and it looks like hell right now. And of course, this toy she really likes. What about this toy? And I'll let you go. Look here. Look here. Oh my goodness, it's the bird. Okay. So that was all 40 something seconds of Olympia. So, but you did get a chance to see how, how big she's getting. So I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite writers. This is a video I've wanted to do for years. I've got to do it fast, and I've got to make it, you know, fairly short, hopefully. I uh, got the house to myself for a few minutes, and um, I wonder how many of you are familiar with Cather. Uh, Cather died in the 1940s, about 47 or 48. She was in her 70s. She had been publishing novels since about, mm, well, she had written a book of poetry and a book of stories, I believe, first. And then she uh, wrote such novels over the teens, the 20s, the 30s. She was a very big author in her time. Um, she was putting out books at the same time as uh, Edith Wharton, as uh, Virginia Woolf. Uh, she was a, a, quite a best-selling writer uh, in her time. Uh, and she did such books as My Antonia is probably the best known, uh, Death Comes for the Archbishop, O Pioneers, One of Ours, The Song of the Lark, Paul's Case, A Lost Lady uh, is one of her uh, best known books, The Professor's House, Shadows on the Rock, Safira and the Slave Girl, which I believe was her last novel, uh, and uh, Shadows on the Rock, Lucy Gayhart. Um, and there is still quite a bit uh, a cult of Cather uh, to this day. Uh, and I'm going to read a couple of letters that Cather wrote, one from uh, someone else's biography, and one from a collection of her letters that I highly recommend. Uh, Yehudi Menuhin was, many of you may be aware, a great violinist of the 20th century. Uh, and this memoir that he wrote was his autobiography called Unfinished Journey. It came out in the mid-70s when he was uh, elderly. Uh, and when he and his sisters, who were all musical, uh, were children in the 19... I think it was late 20s, early 30s, they became very close friends with Willa Cather. Uh, Cather lived in New York City in an elegant apartment. She was a huge classical music opera aficionado, and she made friends uh, with Yehudi and his sisters, Hepzibah and Yalta, these names I know, uh, and they would have people used to People used to do things like this. I wanted to call this video, people used to actually write like this and talk like this. People used to have salons in their home where someone would come and play a musical instrument, somebody would sing, a group of people would sing, someone would recite poetry. Um, you know, you couldn't go to a concert every single night even if you were of means, so certain people would have gatherings in their home. Uh, and somebody would play the piano. Um, uh, Catherine became basically a godmother and mentor uh, to the Menuhin children. I think she was especially close to Yehudi, and he wrote her letters. Uh, this is a letter that he wrote her. I'm not what, sure what the years were. I think this was still the 1930s. Um, and he says she was ant-like, and I'm not quite sure if he has met someone or if he has lost someone that he was thinking of getting married to. This letter is not very long. 
The second one is a bit long, so um, this is the letter he wrote to Cather in the 1930s when he was a young man and uh, in love, I guess. Uh, and either it was happy or unhappy, we'll see. Uh, when Rosalie was gone, I wrote to my favorite confidant, uh, Aunt Willa, to tell her of my loss. With a truly aunt-like combination of sympathy, moral stiffening, and humor, she remarked in reply, A little heartache is a good companion for a, a young man on his holiday. Then took the opportunity to give me some serious advice on the choice of a wife, advice which in retrospect might be thought prophetic. And these are Cather, Cather's words in the letter. You would need fundamental honesty in the wife more than anything else, I think. By honesty, I mean the knowledge that two and two make four and can never be sighed or dreamed into making five. I love that sentence. Uh, also, the knowledge that real love is not so much admiration as it is the drive to help and to my, make life easy for the other person. If a man is a man with a career before him, she must have good sense and stamina as well as charm. But I doubt if you will marry an American at all. I rather think that you will meet a girl with a more disciplined nature than our girls are likely to have. Fortune has always been good to you, my boy, and I rather suspect her crowning favor will be a girl like that slight, heroic, delicate, unconquerable, and in parentheses she says, sounds as if I were describing Marutha, doesn't it? Well, well, like enough you will marry someone much your mother's type. So, that was, uh, you get a taste, you get a bit of flavor of Cather's personality in that letter. Uh, Cather was a very private person. Um, she, even during her lifetime, there wasn't much revealed about her personal life. She was a lesbian who had a long-term affair with her assistant and confidant, Edith Lewis. Uh, they are buried next to each other. Uh, and um, uh, Edith and Willa were together for decades uh, before Willa died in the late 40s. And I think Edith died in the early 70s. Um, Cather did not want her letters published. I say thank God that her wishes were disobeyed. Uh, and But not until about 70 years after her death, uh, her letters finally emerged. And this isn't all of them, but this was, uh, I suppose it was considered the best of the letters, the selected letters of Willa Cather. And there is scarce letters to Edith uh, in the book, in part because, well, usually they were together, uh, but there's at least one book that I think is really, one letter that is really beautiful, and I wanted to read. This one's a little bit long, it'll probably take me a couple of minutes, but I think it's worth listening, listening to, and reading, and reflecting upon. And um, Will is apparently in New Hampshire. I take it Edith is either in somewhere in the United States visiting family, or back home at their apartment in New York for some reason, but they were apart briefly. My darling Edith, I'm sitting in your room, looking out on the woods you know so well. So far everything delights me. I am ashamed of my appetite for food and as for sleep. I had forgotten that sleeping can be an active and very strong physical pleasure. It can. It has been for all of three nights. I wake up now and then, saturated with the pleasure of breathing clear mountain air, not cold, just chill air, of being up high with all the woods below me sleeping too, and still white moonlight. It's a grand feeling. One hour from now, out of your window, I shall see a sight unparalleled. Jupiter and Venus both shining in the golden rosy sky and both in the west. She not very far from the horizon, and he about midway between the zenith and the silvery lady planet. From 5.30 to 6.30, they are of a superb splendor, deepening in color every second, and a still daylight sky, guiltless of other stars, the moon not up, and the sun gone down behind Gap Mountain, those two alone in the whole vault of heaven. It lasts so about an hour, did last night. 
Then the lady, so silvery still, slips down into the clear rose-colored glow to be near the departed sun, and Imperial Jupiter hangs there alone. It goes down about 8.30. Surely it reminds one of Dante's eternal wills. I can't but believe that all majesty and all that beauty, those faded and failing appearances and exits, are something more than mathematics and horrible temperatures. If they are not, then we are the only wonderful things because we can wonder. I have worn my white silk suit almost constantly with no hat, which is very awkward. By next week, it will probably be colder. Everything you patch carried wonderfully, not a wrinkle. And now I must dress to receive the planets, dear as I won't wish to take the time after they appear, and they will not wait for anybody. Lovingly, W. Last sentence, postscript. I don't know when I have enjoyed Jupiter so much as this summer. So, maybe it's not a love letter, but it sure, to me, kind of reads like it, doesn't it? And the most expressive, beautiful connection between people who are very close, have been for decades, expressed beautifully. There's not a scintilla of any kind of vulgarity or um, anything ugly or hugely, you know, there's no big revelations in it or anything. Just beautifully expressed and uh, I think like, you know, these planets are perhaps a metaphor. I may be, you know, carrying this a little bit too far or whatever, but it's just, you have to agree, it's just very beautifully written. Katha wrote like this, you know, and uh, was very private. Uh, perhaps she had her reasons living in the time that she did for not wanting to reveal a lot of things about herself. And so I wanted to share those two. Video I've wanted to do a long time. Trying to make the video not very long. But if you haven't read Willa Cather, by all means, pick up My Antonia, pick up Shadows on the Rock, pick up Lost Lady. Oh, and I, I didn't mention, um, also, there's a very short book that she wrote. I don't even know if you'd call it a novella. Uh, My Mortal Enemy. Uh, and... Uh, I just think that you will really love her and treasure her. There's wonderful biographies of her. We have this uh, collection of letters that I highly recommend. And uh, do check out Willa Cather. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you're a Willa Cather fan, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. And I have another uh, video that I'm hopefully going to try to do this weekend. And everyone who is in the path of the hurricane that's coming through the Carolinas right now, I have family and friends down there, uh, by all means, uh, you know, take care. Uh, and um, I'll speak to everybody soon.